Hey guys, welcome to our Friday gardening tip. Uh, as you can see, it's winter time still. I'm in the garage, but have my gloves on because it's just dang cold still. And uh, I wanted to take a few minutes. In a lot of my videos, I talk about the importance of knowing your last frost date when you're planting in the springtime. And so I, I've done some research and, and I wanted to kind of give you guys some general guidelines for when your last frost date should be based on what your garden zone is, okay? So first off, if you don't know what your garden zone is, you need to go look it up. So down in the description below, there's a link that will take you out to my website, Our Stony Acres, and it's an article that I wrote about garden zones. And then within that, there are some links out to several different uh, governmental agencies, the USDA, the Canada one, the European one, that will give you a zone number so you can go there and then look up what your zone is and it'll give you a number and it'll usually be between 1 and 10 um, most likely it's probably more between 4 and 8 um, but it'll give you a, a garden zone that then you can use to figure out what your frost dates are going to be and then that knowing that garden zone is very important for lots of other things as well so go and figure out if you don't know what your garden zone is go figure out what it is Otherwise, let's take just a minute and talk about last frost dates, the average last frost date for the different gardening zones, okay? First off, zone 10, which um, for those of us in North America, uh, there, there's not a lot of zone 10s unless you live in Mexico. Um, there's, there's zone 10s in Mexico. There, there's a little bit in California, a little bit at the tip, tip of Texas, and a little bit in the, 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 the tail end of Florida. Um, so those are very temperate zones and you don't really have a last frost date in those areas because frost is so unusual in those areas. So there, there's not like an average last frost because sometimes you don't ever have frost. Uh, it just kind of depends on the year. So for zone 10, sorry, no average. Uh, frost is real hit and miss for you guys, okay? Now, when we move into zone 9, which is a little bit further north, but still mostly, uh, you know, the southern part of the United States and, and coastal regions uh, of, of the Pacific coast, uh, then that's zone 9. And those of you that live in zone 9 ought to expect your last frost to be roughly March 1st, okay? Now, I'm going to give you dates that are pretty general, for your area and for your garden zone. So you're gonna have to go do some research on your own to kind of pin it down. But it should be roughly these dates that I give you, um, somewhere around there. But it could be, give or take, a couple of weeks on either side. So, you know, zone nine could, your last frost could be as, as early as February 15th or as late as March 15th. Um, but that, that March 1st is kind of a, a good average for you. And, and I know I'm gonna get some grief from some of you because I, I'm, it, it's just hard to give you absolutes. So I'm just trying to give you guys a good general idea of when that last frost ought to be, okay? So forgive me if, it, you know, if, if it's not exactly right for your zone nine or your zone whatever I give you. I'm trying to do my best here because this is kind of a, a, a little bit of a vague subject. So roughly for zone nine, you should be March 1st, okay? Now, zone eight, you, you ought to be about April 1st. Zone seven, about April 15th. Zone six, you should be about May 1st. Zone five, about May 15th. And then zones three and four um, is a little bit more vague. All the research that I could do was telling me somewhere between May 15th and June 1st. Okay, so if you live in zones three and four, you're kind of going to hit that, that end of May, 1st of June is, is when your target last frost is. Okay, so there we go. Let's run through them one more time for you really quick, not to be repetitive, but let's do it. Uh, zone nine uh, is March 1st. Zone eight, April 1st. Zone seven, April 15th. Zone six, May, 5th, May 1st. Zone five, May 15th. Uh, zones three and four between May 15th and June 1st. Okay. So there's your list. Now, why is this date so important? Uh, the reason why it is so important is because that's kind of when you're going to target planting. So for example, if you 
want to get cool season crops planted. So things like lettuce or broccoli or cabbage or, you know, all of the different cool season crops. You're going to target planting those by seedling about four to six weeks before that last frost date. So if you live in a zone six and your last frost date is May 1st, then you're going to target getting those guys in somewhere around April 1st, maybe even as early as March 15th if you've got some protection or something like that. Um, did I do that math right? I did. So probably about April 1st is, is when you're going to plan on getting those in. So, th But then when we're talking about warm season crops, so things like tomatoes or cucumbers or eggplants or beans, those are going to go in after your last frost date or right around your last frost date. And so it's important for you to know those dates so that you know when you should be planting in your garden. Okay. So just a really quick video today. Again, I apologize that it's a little bit on the vague side. And I know some of you, I'm going to get some haters saying that's just absolutely not right for my zone. And, and you know what? I understand that it's not right for my zone. Um, so I live in a zone six and it says it should be May 1st, but mine is actually about May 15th because of where I live regionally and I live in a, a low spot in a valley. And, and so there's all kinds of variation. So those dates that I gave you, I hope are helpful enough to kind of give you a good idea of when to start thinking about that frost going away for the season. Okay. All right. That's all I have for you for this week. Please make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and uh, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, click on the notification bell so that you get noticed when I release new videos. And uh, that's all I have for you for this week. Everybody have a great week. Happy gardening.